Hello and welcome back to the EVRC where we are back on board the brilliant Engway M20 Cafe Racer style e-bike. In this video we'll be installing the extra battery and doing a throttle only speed run to see if it makes any difference. In a later video we'll also be doing the Sandy Lane hill climb to see if it can get revenge after losing out to the Engway Engine Pro by two measly seconds. Before we get that battery on I promised Engway I'd mention that it's their ninth anniversary and in all of April they will be offering money off some of their best e-bikes including the engine pro the ep2 pro and of course you can still get 150 pounds or 200 dollars off the m20 featured in this video links to those bikes are in the description below and if you use my links it does help the channel very much so thank you if you do but don't just use them now make sure you've watched the actual review of the bike just to see if you actually like it before we get the battery on engway also sent me a little accessories pack that is available on their store it consists of a smart helmet that is that it's smart because it's got Bluetooth stuff going on it and not just because it looks smart but for some reason I got a black helmet which isn't smart at all although it does look smart but it does have a really cool magnetic latch to be honest I do prefer this type of helmet to the traditional push bike style big polystyrene thing helmet so I was quite happy to get this one also in the pack is a nifty foldable lock a very nice backpack that will also attach to a rear rack and a drawstring bag that my son will probably use as a swimming bag at some point in the future. Oh, and two little Engwe badges that are nice, but I'd only wear if, um, actually I can't think why I'd ever wear them, but they're very nice. Let's get that extra battery on the M20. Well, howdy, and welcome back to the EVRC, where today we're going to be changing the uh, the battery configuration of this year M20 by Engwe. I do like this case, but I prefer a battery. Firstly, we will get rid of the saddle because underneath the saddle is the controller. I'm finding using the circular it's all the way around one helps quite a lot. And then when you get it to a certain point, because these bolts are quite long, when you get it down a certain amount, and then you can start doing it a lot quicker. Now I was worried about the, uh, the ones in there. If you can see, the screws aren't as long. So you can get to it, you can use a socket straight away. So I'm gonna finish this off, we'll get the saddle off. Ugh. There we go. There's a controller, which is 20 amp controller for 48 volt batteries. We wanna undo this one here with the red bit on. If you look at this, it's quite similar. Uh, no batteries are connected, so I can't buy. So undo that, feed this wire through the bottom, there you go, let's get these bad boys in, that's better, that's pretty solid, that was connected to that, so we need this, the two battery equaliser, that's going to get connected to that. Where, where's this fake power coming from? Get in there, you bugger. And try not to touch the metal then, because there might be a bit of like power in there, in a capacitor or something. And I don't think it matters which one goes which. Again, that one. Again, that one. Right, now he's going to find a space for this. Luckily, there, there seems to be a decent amount of space. So I'm going to kind of twirl that like that, shove that in there like that. Yeah, that'll do, mate. That'll do. Puffy. Right, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original battery and I'm going to put it on where it used to go. This should come on. Let's put you on. Let's turn you off as well. Here. Lock. <laughs> right, what I'm gonna do, I'll turn you off, turn you off. So at the moment, there's no power. Nothing. So I'm gonna turn the top one on only. And we got power. 
and then I can turn the bottom one on. We've got two power. Turn the top one off. Still got power. Woohoo! So now I'm just gonna get this bugger on and go and test it out. Woo! Okay, I got a bit of cover. Oh, hello. So, flat ground, speed test. 25. 26. Oh. Slow down. Holy, well, that was then. 24, 25, 26. Are we eking an extra mile an hour out of this battery? Go pedaling, remember? Whoa! Whoa, let's get to the side of the road. So whereas before I was getting about 25 miles per hour on flat ground here, I was now getting 26. I'd actually already done the hill climb test as well. I wouldn't really have expected a higher top speed since the two 48 volt batteries are wired in parallel. This means it doesn't create a 96 volt battery. Instead it acts like a 48 volt battery with double the capacity, 26 amp hours instead of 13. But electric motors do work best with full batteries, so maybe with the two battery configuration it's as if it has a full battery for longer. Engui has said that when both batteries are turned on, the battery with the highest charge will be used first. Once both batteries are at an equal charge, they will both be used together. I had them both on from the start, so they should be draining at half the speed as a single 48 volt battery. If you got something from that video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. The M20 will be back soon with the hill climb results. Did it manage to beat the Engine Pro with its dual battery configuration, or did the extra weight of the extra battery actually slow it down? We'll also be riding it in pitch black so you can see how good those double lights really are. If you don't want to miss that, then make sure you subscribe. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe when you get bored of cool electric transport. If you haven't seen my review and first ride yet of the Engui M20, make sure you check those out. And if you end up wanting to buy the bike, I would appreciate it very much if you use the affiliate links. Thanks again for watching and until next time, ride safe.